I'm going to be sharing um, one of the things um, as we see in the book of Genesis. But when you read the TPT translation of Genesis, um, and you read that from verse 26, it says, let us make man in our own image after our own likeness and let them have dominion over the, over the fish in the sea, the birds in the air, and every creeping thing that every living thing and every keeping that the face of the earth. Now, when he said that in that book of Genesis from the 26 to 28, and he said, in the image of God, he created, he them, male and female created, he them. Now note that male and female created, he them. All right? Male and female created, he them. And he now gave them a command that they should do what they should subdue. That like I've always maintained that the word subdue, the word domi um, dominion, all of them, the word replenish, the, 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 it's like the different aspects of, um, of a singular root word. Now, most of the time when you see different translations coming and bringing out certain things that are surrounding the same interpretation of words is because there is no one English language that can capture the true meaning the etymology of words. That is why I love reading. Um, I love reading uh, the mirror translation. The mirror translation. They picked their words from etymology of words. They picked their words from the etymology. That is the origin of either the Greek word or the Hebrew word as translated in scriptures. And you see that it gives you a better meaning. It gives you a better light in what you are passing on to the people. Now, on that note, we, 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 we begin to see that when he says, let that they should, that you, I'm good, I think we should start interpreting scripture the way, because scripture is about you, all right? That you should have dominion, that I should have dominion over the fish in the sea, over the birds in the air, over every creeping thing that creeps upon the face of the ground. Now, when we understand that, it changes it, it arouses in us an interest to start searching to know what in my domain, what does it mean to have dominion? What is the meaning of dominion? Dominion is not, um, is not a yearly thing. To subdue is not a yearly thing, thing. Dominion is not that you become an oppressor. There is a clear sound. It's an instruction that is given. It's an active word. And what action am I supposed to take when it says that I should have dominion? So I begin to make research on that word dominion, and I begin to see that it's asking me, it's putting me in charge of something specific that... It's my responsibility to decide and to determine how things should play out in the territory that he has given me to have dominion over. Okay? So, what that pertains is this, that when he says, let them have dominion over every creature, every creation in the sea, on the, in the air, on the land, what it means is that I decide, I have the authority, I have been empowered to decide how things must play out in my territory, how things must play out in my region, how things must play out in the, bound, in the set boundaries where I have been placed as a king or a king priest to rule and to reign over. So questions. Have you located your domain? In the place where you are, whether you are in Europe, you are in the U US, you are in the you are you are you are in the UK, you are in Russia, you are in New Zealand, you are in Australia, 
wherever you are on the face of the earth, I want to ask you a question. Where are you seated? Where are you ruling from, number one? Number two, within that place where you are, have you taken charge? Have you consciously taken charge of the territory that you have been given? Now, for you to take charge, it means that you have been able to locate by boundaries the territory that you have been, that has been set under you where you sit in command, where you sit in control, where you sit, where you take charge, where you sit in to subdue, to dominate, to, to rule in dominion, um, to replenish, to fix, and to repair. So another question is, do you know your territory? Do you know your boundaries? Have you taken time to download your boundaries. Now, if you are going to do that, it then means that if you have done that, then one step further, have you downloaded the scroll of that territory? Now, what people translated as spiritual mapping in those days is actually the real thing should be for you to download the scroll the blueprint, when I say scroll now, I'm talking about the blueprint as originally intended by God that this particular territory was meant to manifest this blueprint. There is a pattern of heaven. There's a pattern of God's kingdom that had been ordained. I'm in Osaka, London right now, in Lekki, right? In Lekki, Nigeria, and in Lekki, Lagos, Nigeria. Now, there is a blueprint there is an ordination. When God created Osaka London, <laughs> they call it Osaka London, right? Uh, for Yoruba, you can interpret that, whatever it means. There, now, there is an ordination that was released. There's a pattern that God ordained that was in God's original intent, the blueprint as was ordained, as was designed to be the genesis or from whence, which was the genesis from whence Osapa London was created. So, Lagos State may have created Osapa London, but guess what? There is a blueprint, there's an original blueprint that was in the mind of God when he inspired a place called Osapa. And you know, based on that blueprint, there are gates and gatekeepers that will that will allow for the operations of that blueprint to be downloaded and to be operated all right now but when the right prince that is to govern and to rule and to set in place and to activate the operations of that blueprint when that prince is not yet in place strangers occupy. And that is why, so the first to come into that place is called the principality, that's number one. Number two, strangers begin to occupy such territories until a son, until a prince that carries the signet and holds the scepter that rules over that territory comes. Now, that is why you see that you have a lot of people and you find that the one that is stronger will dislodge the weaker one and they take the, the, the seat. However, when the one with the scepter, the iron scepter, with which it will break, it will, it will break nations like Port Shed, when that prince comes, the one that is a king priest, the one that carries the ordination and carries the aura and the fragrance that flows from the Father's throne, when he steps in, every other power, they begin to scamper, they begin to run, they begin to, by themselves, they carry their things. Why? Because they know the Prince of Light, the Prince of Peace, the, the, the one who carries the life and the light of God has come into the scene. 
Now, you may be in that place and you, will be, you, you have been oppressed in that particular region where you are supposed to be ruling and reigning as a king. Why? Because you are yet to know your identity. You are yet to know who you are. So, I have an assignment right now. What is that assignment? To, I have just opened up something. So, my most important assignment today is to bring you, to awaken in you a desire, not just a desire, but a strong desire to come into the systemic knowledge of your operational identity. So if I'm to title this message, I will say, walking, oh my goodness, walking in the operations, or let me just say, the power of your operational identity. The power or the knowledge of your office. Knowledge is power. So you can use power, you can use knowledge. The knowledge of or the awakening of your operational identity. You see, I can be a general in the army, but I'm not wearing my uniform. But I have my ID card. So by that identity, even those who do not know me, once I present, I flash my identity, even though I'm in mufti, you see, they will still, I still wield the authority. Uniform men are there. They mistook me for something else. The moment I flash my identity, everyone who wants to oppress me comes under my authority. All right? But I could be wearing a uniform <laughs> with my rank, but I don't have my identity. But I'm wearing a general's uniform. But there are certain places where they don't know or they do not recognize my uniform. Now, I, they now ask, okay, may we see your identity? Just like these days, you see soldiers on the road, all right, mountain roadblocks, but we have heard that there are fake soldiers. Mm. Before I got saved, how some people who um some generals disguised some 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 what are, some scammers disguised as generals dressed in military attire. They went to see Gaddafi because Gaddafi wanted to train some people to overthrow the Nigerian government so that he will implant somebody. So um, I was close to one of them as at the time, his name, Prince, you know, was one of the top guns when it comes to, he was a drug lord actually. Now, so he, he organized 25 of them. They went and they collect Asada in those days. In those days, millions millions will be what they will call billions these days all right they collected millions of dollars from Gaddafi to overthrow the Nigerian government all right now when what the the reason Gaddafi believed them was because it wasn't just the uniform they showed their identity cards but they were not soldiers so they collected the money, came back, and reported to the military government. The truth is, they had taken permission from the military government. That's why they gave them an identity that looks like the real. Because they knew who they were going to meet. So Gaddafi investigated, and they confirmed that these names are real. But they were not soldiers. So you see that in our own case, they could deceive the man because they had the identity. It wasn't just in the uniform. If they had gone with just the uniform without the identity, none of them would have returned. 
Now, some of us, we have the uniform. We don't have the identity. Some of us don't even have the identity. We don't even have the uniform. So what my responsibility this morning is to teach us how do we then come to get, how do we receive the uniform? How do we get this identity? Of course, by now, without my saying it, you should know the answer, right? Now, it is in your walk with God. It is in your fellowship with him. The first thing is to believe in what he did. That you are, say, with the heart man believes, and with the mouth confession is made unto right, unto salvation. Now, the first thing is believing all that he did, that his work is finished, and that he has ordained you a king and a priest unto our God, and that you rule and you reign on the earth. But one, two, you will have to go back to the genesis of your origin, to the beginning of your beginning. <laughs> and what is that beginning? Where you were conceived, let us make man in our own image and let them possess our likeness. So you need to return to that place. Then you now begin to study how is God like? Woo! Do you see that? Everything we need to become was already embedded in our very DNA and the very foundation and the very beginning of our beginnings. So let us make man in our image after our likeness, which means your pursuit, it should be to express the likeness of God. So you want to find out, how is Yahweh like? How is Jesus like? How is the Spirit like? That becomes your entire pursuit. Now, as you pursue that, you begin to see that as you are becoming everything he is, as you are manifesting his likeness, naturally, the operation of your identity begins to reshape. Number one, we locate your ordained or foreordained territory. Number two, we set the boundaries right. And number three, the operation of your identity begins to find expression in the territories that you have been given. Am I making sense? Does that, the, the, was I able to drive that home? I need a response. Does that make sense yes, to sir. you? All right. Yes, sir. Good. Yes, you are making sense. So when you understand that, it changes the fragrance of your pursuits and your understanding and your perceptions. Why? Because as I'm knowing God, I'm becoming like him. Because that is my description. That is the pattern. That is my ordination. That is um, my, that is the purpose for which I was created, to be like him. I'm his image to manifest his likeness. Created in his image to manifest his likeness. So, what I begin to do is, as I'm driving to be like him, I take on his identity and the operation of that identity begin to find expression in every place. That is why Jesus will say, whatever I see my father do, that is what I do. By that, Jesus was giving you an access and a divine ascent into entering into where the father is to see what the father is doing so that that is the pattern that he's saying now go and replicate on the earth front. now when you do this naturally what begins to happen is that you begin to shut down dark systems you begin to light up the cities you begin to light up spaces and you begin to take territories and you begin to expand boundaries. 
Aleluya. So, I believe strongly that we have come into the season, into the time space, into that time period in our lives where the Lord is saying, hey, be awakened. Awake from your slumber, you that have been sleeping. And be awakened unto righteousness. So come into light so that you will not become the light of the world. A city set upon a hill that cannot be hid. That men will see you. And by reason of their sighting you, they see the glory of God and they are drawn into that glory. You become an highway of salvation. When some, um, Isaiah 58 begins to say from verse 10, so after talking from verse 1, he said, is this not the fast, fast that I have chosen for you? You know, from verse 1, he was describing, he said, what do you call the fast? He was describing what you, he said, because you, he said, but this is the fast I have chosen for you. That you give your meal to the poor. You do this, you do that. Then, say, when you have done this, say, then when you cry unto me, I will hear you speedily. But see, the one that I want to bring out, he said, that you will be like a well-watered garden. Ooh. You'll be like a well-watered garden. Not only that, he said, you will be a repairer of the breach, a restorer of the old waste places. You see, it's taking you back to your assignment in Genesis. Yeah. Because when the Lord formed you in his image and after his likeness, the intention was that just like God himself, when God steps into a place, there's a reorganization. There is a beauty, there's a glory that is released. And that's what you are supposed to be doing. That is why he said, the whole earth is filled with his glory. So when, so when Jesus said, go ye therefore, make disciples of all the nations. Why? Is it because all power in heaven and on earth has been given unto me. I'm going to say this over and over again until it breaks out as light to you. All power in heaven and on earth has been given unto me. All power in heaven and on earth has been given unto me. And you see, I'm now reading it in the first person. All Jesus did not say, I want you to know that all power in heaven and on earth had been given unto Jesus Christ. He said, all power in, <laughs> in heaven and on earth had been given unto me. And I said, go ye therefore and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them. Woo! I release the presence. Baptizing them in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. Lo, I am with you even till the end of the age. Matthew 28 from verse 18 to 20. Lo, I'm with you till the end of the age. Now, listen to this. It says there that all power in heaven and on earth has been given unto me. I want you to put yourself in the light of seeing that everything Christ came to do, he was introducing you. Christ, his assignment, Jesus, his assignment was to show me to me, in himself. That was why he came as a child, just the way I grew as a child. And he began to describe, he said, listen to this. Any man, except a man be born again, which means you have to take on the nature of a child in, in order to enter into the spirit life and that spirit life is defined in this living world. Now, 
When you come into that knowledge and into that light, what begins to happen is like there is there is something that explodes from deep within you. That explosion brings about an unraveling of a depth of truth and knowledge that begin to not only set you free, but it begins to set men, territories, regions, even nations and continents at liberty. Hmm. Lord, help me. So you see, <laughs> when he said, all power in heaven and on earth has been given unto me, by that he was saying, just like when Yahweh said to Moses, I am, say to them, I am, have sent you. So by that, Moses entered. So by this also, God, what Jesus was saying, listen, so long as you know and you are conscious of your I amness in me and your oneness with me, everything, the power in heaven and on earth that has been given unto me has also been given unto you. That is why you have the power to shut systems down and you have the power to open and to light up systems, territories and nations. Because we have not yet come into the, into the our identity operations is why it's looking like we are powerless. But I have news for you. We are a generation that carries the life, the power, the knowledge, the supremacy of God. And when we step into places, those territories, the gods, the powers that we're, those, the princes that we're keeping watch until our arrival, they suddenly begin to hand over the territory to us without your fighting. The warfare that you need to engage is a warfare of your of the knowledge of your identity and the operations of that identity. Once you come into that knowledge, you come into that op the, or the, the, the operation of your identity, things begin to fall in place. Things begin to get reset. There is an eruption of the glory of God breaking out in every place where the, the power, the power reign of God, the, the power that flows from his throne begin to rest in every territory round about you. That is why Ezekiel 47 so excites me when you begin to see that we have had um, a misplaced information that also that actually reduced us and reduced our oppression. Instead, we became, we now entered into the realm of what we should be given we now entered into that realm and it was as if we were receiving. We are givers. That is why you are the temple of the Holy Spirit. Now from this temple, from the threshold of this temple, the water begins to flow. That is measured, that every one cubic, that every, every thousand cubic of that measurement of the water that is flowing from this temple, from the threshold of this temple, when it is measured, you will see ankle deep. When it's calibrated again, knee deep, it's calibrated, waist deep, it's calibrated, it becomes a water to swim, a river to swim in. So you see that the prophet, having gone through all of that, was brought back. But you see, the prophet was actually at the beginning. All right? It was flowing from the temple. Now you are the living temple. You are the temple of the Holy Spirit, which means the water that is flowing from you, the life that is flowing from you, the knowledge, the wisdom that is flowing from you should be a flowing stream that is bringing about transformation in every place that the water enters. So I want to ask you another question. See, there are a lot of questions. So when you go back, you need to meditate on this question. I'm not giving the answer to, this, to those questions. I'm giving you a guide on how you can become the answers that you will get as you begin to meditate on those questions. To journey into life. Hallelujah. So, <laughs> glory to God. So you now begin to see that as you, as the water is flowing, what is it doing? It's setting up spirit structures that will begin to heal the wounds of the nation, the ills of the nations. And it's also giving them food. The fruit is giving them a kind of feeding them in righteousness, feeding them in holiness, 
feeding them in the purity of God and bringing them into the maturity of sons, bringing them into the maturity of the image of God until they to become living temples that the water begins to flow from. So you are raising spirit structures that heal the system, realign the system, come, you know, um, 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 how do I put it now? Take charge of the systems and bring them into alignment in righteousness, establishing kingdom jurisdiction in every place that that stream enters. So who are those who will? So if you are to light up the city, you must come into the full expression of this knowledge. What knowledge? The operation, the operational dimension of your identity. Or the identity dimension <laughs> of your purpose fulfillment. Amen. So, like I said, in the place of fellowship, in the place of ascensions, I have described ascension before. Ascension is you building constantly, reminding yourself constantly, meditating constantly that I am seated with Christ in heavenly places. Far above mm, powers and principalities. That is my realm. I am not an earth dweller. I am he. I am of they that dwell in the heavens. And from the heavens, we see patterns. We download patterns. We download blueprints. And with the blueprint, we check the things that are on the earth realm. And because of the because we hold the blueprint, I know I can recognize anything that is not in line with the blueprint in my hands. So I fix them. I correct them. I am a prince. I carry peace. Praise the brother. The peace well, the big of the kingdom. The peace of my father's kingdom. I carry the life of Yahweh. I expand. I disperse. I disperse the very love of Yeshua. The compassion that flows from him flows through me. I am one with him. This is my consciousness. This is my awakened and operational consciousness. Anything that is contrary cannot stand around me. For I am the one who carries the fragrance of God's glory. And I establish God's kingdom jurisdiction in every place I step. Anything that is contrary to his jurisdiction cannot stand where I am. That is why I have the power to root out. I have the power to throw down. I have the power to destroy anything that does not carry my father's signature on them because I am seated with him in his, on his executive throne in heavenly realms. That is my reality. My reality is not a distorted form of the disconfigurations and the malalignments of the earth realm. My reality flows from his throne, where things are seen from his own perspective, where I have the power to call things, though they are not, but I see them from my father's throne through his own eyes, and I call the things that I see in him and even though the situation does not look like it, but because this is what I have seen in my father's throne, I call it forth and they are. So you see, they say the doctors only gave me the information that some there is cancer so that I will have a name to call 
and to cast out. So I say to cancer, you are not, because this is the temple of the Holy Spirit, therefore you are healed. So I say to the blind, you were not designed to be blind for eyes were given to see. And even though there were no eyes there, I call those things that be not as though they are. So eyes be and eyes are. So I say to the eyes open and they are open. Why? Because I have the keys of the kingdom in my hand. When I shut, no man can open. And when I open, no man can shut. Are you seeing a journey into ascensions? So you see, ascensions therefore becomes when you begin to awaken within you everything that you are in the heavenly realm. So that becomes your dwelling. That becomes your natural habitat. So you are no longer seeing the evil that is happening, but you begin to see the glory in the midst of all the confusion and the chaos. So why people are saying there is a casting down, you are saying there is a lifting up. Why? Because in the place where you are seated, none, none can cast anyone down. There, there is only one thing that happens there. As you behold with unveiled faces, as in a glass, the image of the Son of God, we are transformed into that same image as from one level of glory unto another. So as we are transformed into that same image from one level to another, that is what you begin to see. That becomes your reality. That becomes your definition. That becomes your being. It's what begins to eat you up. It's what swallows you up. It's what en enfolds you. That's what becomes your dance. It becomes your hava. It becomes your your, your, your spirit life, it becomes your spirit definition, it becomes what gives wings to your mind. That begins to reshape your mindset. That is where mind shifts comes from. Hallelujah. So you find that all of a sudden, all the stronghold of the past experiences, they begin to get neutralized. They are dissolved. Why? Because you are seen now from a different perspective. The things that you once interpreted evil, all of a sudden from the eyes of the Lord, you begin to see that the Lord permitted it to happen. Why? You are seeing from God's own perspective and you see the end and you know that even this is working for my good because I love the Lord and because I have been all foreordained. So even this is now turning me into, <laughs> is building, working out in me that which the Lord preordained, he foreordained for me to become conformed. So he's using that which men called evil, that which men called wrong, bad, dirty, ugly. He's using it to conform me to the image of his son and he's bringing out a beauty. He's bringing out a glory out of the ashes. Do you see what I'm saying? So you see, this now becomes your, <laughs> your reality. This is what ascension is. Your ascension, ascension is not only when you are struggling to climb. You do not climb because you are already there. You are not going up because you are already there. All that is happening is that you are tuning your mental abilities to become, to come out, to be awakened, to become awakened to the reality of where you are seated in heavenly places on the throne of God with the scepter and the signet ring, where you rule over situations and over circumstances. Amen. This becomes the prophetic scroll that is making, that is becoming real. It's bringing your life into alignment and giving your life a definition of your God imagery and your God likeness. It's awakening you to your God identity. So every time you stand in the mirror, all of a sudden, because of the consciousness of where you are now seated, you are seeing him. You are seeing him in yourself. And you know what happens? The joy of the Lord begins to rise from deep within you, overflowing, forming a golden pot petal, forming a silver petal, washing over you and awakening in you, making you more and more aware of where you are seated in glory places, in glory heights, in ascended realms. That is what makes you and gives you wings. That is what gives you, the empowers you to begin to flow and manifest your supernatural self. So you don't struggle to do supernatural. You believe and you do. Why? Because your mental sense 
have not been taken over by the reality and of the consciousness of your dwelling place in heavenly places. Hallelujah. I can dwell here over and over again because I, I just really need this to sing because if this sinks in you, your dream life changes. Your ability to command and they come to be comes into effect. If I can have six persons on this platform that can come into the reality of who they are, the being of their, their God identity, their God imagery, their God likeness, when they come into that, I tell you the truth, that as they begin to share, you will see that everyone on this platform will catch the fire. And that is what I release that grace now. I say, let that grace begin to saturate the platform even now. Let the consciousness, even as I'm speaking, as I was releasing those things, I know that consciousness were being opened and people began to rise. So I just release the grace now for you to be awakened to the consciousness of your God identity, the consciousness of your God imagery, the consciousness of your God likeness. I decree and declare right now that you be awakened to it in the name of Jesus. You walk in the fullness of it. You walk in the ability for, of it. Because uh, it is in this that you light up your city, you light up your territory, and you begin to take the things that the enemy has stolen, the things that the enemy was seated upon. All of a sudden, you begin to say, the king is here. And when the king is seated, you will find that even that which the enemy has. So that is why the enemy... He steals, but he's storing up for the day that you'll be matured. Woo! Woo! Did you hear that? Everything that you thought was stolen, they took it from you because you were not yet matured. But now that you are coming into awareness, the thief will begin to bring those things to submit to you. That is why he says, when the thief is caught, he shall restore sevenfold. Do you know why? Because when he's thought up, he was trading with it. So the trade, all the profits that he made, he's heaping them up for you. Is somebody hearing the sound of my voice this morning? That the glory of the Lord is coming and is being awakened. And there is a storehouse that is opened right now. And that storehouse is bringing everything that was stolen. The things that you thought you had lost. There is a restoration coming to you right now in the name of Jesus. So whether they broke into your storehouse, they broke into your auditorium, they broke into a place and they carried things, I'm saying to you right now directly that the hour, the season of restoration is here. Why? Because you have grown. You are now coming up. You are becoming awakened you have become awakened to your seated position in Christ Jesus. And because of that awakeness, everything that the enemy in that territory stole from you, they will bring it to your storehouse. They will come and lay it at your feet. They will release them. Why? Because your throne, your scepter is now speaking. Your signet ring has been activated. Your genetic code is coming into full maturity. You are now beginning to operate by your identity. Your decrees are now by your identity. And guess what? Systems will answer to your God identity. So I release it now. Receive it. Receive the fullness of this grace. And we'll start walking in the consciousness of this restoration in the name of Yeshua HaMashiach. Amen and amen. All right. So we'll stop. We'll leave it here today. I believe that we have been able to press in to get something out today. And I know that as we engage this, as we go back to this recording, especially when I began to talk about ascension, I want to encourage you to play it back over and over again until your consciousness of where you are seated with Christ is awakened. Then, you will begin to shine forth as a great light, lighting up your territories, your city, in the name of Jesus. God bless you. I appreciate you. I love you. And I know that God is doing a great thing in your life, in your family, in your circle, to bring that kingdom jurisdiction onto establishment. In Yeshua's name, we do pray. Amen and amen. God bless you. Yeah, so we come to the end of this month, this of the Sunday's light of the city. 
So the Lord began to stir in my heart yesterday as I waited on him. Before, maybe by the end of this month, we are going to have a, a special three days um, Light of the City Conference. A special three days Light of the City Conference. Um, I will let you know in another one week or so, I should be able to give you the full details of that meeting. All right. I'm perceiving strongly that it's going to be a live meeting. It's going to be a live meeting. Yet we'll still, we'll still do online for those who are not around, for those who will be joining from other countries. But for those in Lagos or Abuja, I don't know where it's going to take place yet. But wherever it's going to take place, just know that it's going to be a live meeting, a live conference, Light of the City Conference. And it's going to spark up something. I believe so. Um, I'm going to talk to some ministers, to some elders, because I just perceive in my spirit that it's time to begin to push and to awaken sons onto the realities of their identities. The Lord bless you and cause his face to shine upon you. Even as I commend you unto God and to the word of his grace that builds you up and brings you into the full operation of your identity for this is the heritage of those who are called by his name. God bless you and cause his face to shine upon you always in Jesus' name. I love you.